Hello everyone. So I hope you are uh, enjoying the Easy BI videos. So these days uh, or in the last uh, few days, I made a lot of videos on uh, Easy BI and uh, I have of course covered quite a lot of things, but there are so many things that I want to cover. So uh, stay tuned. In my future Easy BI videos, I will be uh, talking a bit more about uh, MDX calculated measures and I have of course covered uh, or st started doing those uh, videos where I have shown how to maybe calculate few things like date difference. In the last couple of videos I talked about how to parse a date and uh, when it comes to MDX there are a lot of things that you can do but of course at the same time when you're using EZBI you also have to ensure that the EZBI reports are uh, performing well. Yes, EZBI is, is like one of the best app for, for reporting, but uh, if you don't configure it well, then uh, it might not work. For example, if you have a very big Jira instance, so the, so the, way, G, so the way EZBI works is you can uh, uh, configure it to read from Jira and it will uh, from time to time based on the frequency that you set, it will basically import data from Jira to your EZBI database, right? Now, this works fine, but at the same time, uh, when you are, uh, and, and by the way, in this video, we are talking about uh, some best practices when it comes to EZBI. So when you are trying to configure the import, just think about it and uh, don't try, try, to conf try, try to configure this import to import everything. So if let us say you, you just want to create a report for maybe two projects, then only focus on those two projects. So when you actually configure this uh, import or when you set up set up your EZBI account, you have the option to, to basically limit your import to maybe a project or, or maybe a JQL filter. I, I actually prefer JQL and I'll tell you why. For example, if you have to let us say import from uh, from uh, Jira based on a project. So of course in your in your EZBI configuration, you can use a tick, you know, those check boxes. That works fine. But if you have to, let us say, change in feature, you can of course go back to your EZBI configuration, check or uncheck projects, and of course it will work, but you need to be like admin, right, for, for that. But there are a lot of cases where you might not have admin access to maybe Jira. In that case, when you request for an account in EZBI, use a JQL uh, or maybe just a filter. So create a filter, not only just JQL, create a filter so that uh, the filter that you create can be modified by you without any admin rights. So just a small thing, but super useful. And when it comes to EZBI um, configuration, I have covered it, by the way, I think, uh, you know, I'm sure I have covered it, but uh, uh, let me just talk about it. You can watch my videos, by the way, especially the first few videos. Now, when it comes to, um, let us say, the, the apps. So there are some apps, like, let me give you a couple of examples. So when it comes to apps like Tempo, right? So you need sometimes to create a report where you need to maybe use the Tempo timesheets information or maybe Tempo planner information. So you can actually use this uh, information in your EZBI because uh, you of course can use Tempo timesheets and Tempo planner or maybe Tempo budgets or cost tracker. But Tempo uh, reports or Tempo based or reports based on Tempo data uh, will not be available in your EZBI account un uh, uh, until you select Tempo. So you have to basically make sure that Tempo is checked uh, somewhere. And just to give you a very simple example, when you, let us say, are using Tempo Planner, right? Like, for example, you have three resources and you want those three resource resources to work on uh, items in Jira, like Jira issues, for the next few months. So this information can be used for uh, maybe planning for maybe capacity management and when people log their work. So let us say you assign those three resources to work full time 
on two projects for the next maybe two months. Of course, based on those resources, vacations, non-working days, you can of course just not uh, use Tempo Planner or basically don't assign anything on that particular date because that is, that is what Tempo Planner can do. It can basically give you this view where you can tell it or tell Jira that, okay, I want this resource to work on this particular issue on this date, right? Which is great. Now, when people log their time, you can actually do a comparison report, okay, plan versus actual, but of course, by resource. So this kind of report can be, of course, there are some reports that will come with Tempo uh, also, but uh, when you have EZBI, you can also do this uh, over the period of time. You can also do some forecasting, right? based on the planning and based on the actual so far. And when you create a report, you can create some kind of a, like a line where uh, it, it would be something similar to a burn down chart or burn up chart or some kind of a bar or area graph uh, where you can see based on the current information and based on the planning. Right now you have probably done this much work and this much work probably translates directly to some money based on uh, those resources, individual, let us say, cost rate, uh, which of course you can also, uh, I mean, you can hard code it or you can also do few things. We'll probably talk about it when we talk about Tempo. Yes, I will be making, I have started making videos on Tempo, but I'm just doing some more homework. So when you have this information in EZBI, like Tempo planning information, you can forecast, you can see, okay, based on the current planning, uh, for those resources and the actual, this is what I have in terms of time so far. And this is how much you can potentially maybe expect based on the planning of those resources. So you can you can treat this report as maybe some kind of capacity management. You can treat it uh, for, uh, you can use this, uh, you can treat this kind of a report in any format, maybe Tableau format or maybe some kind of a bar or line, whatever format. And uh, you can also maybe uh, use this information to calculate, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, maybe, you know, cost, uh, the, the, the money that you have to bill your clients. But of course, Tempo cost tracker or Tempo budget is, of course, uh, there where you can configure your rates. Uh, so you have to basically make sure that uh, uh, Tempo is configured to work with, or not really, don't, uh, I mean, yes, because when you're trying to configure Tempo on EZBI, along with EZBI, you also have to ensure that, I believe you have to, especially on cloud, you have to use the Tempo API and access code that, uh, that, that needs to be configured in uh, EZBI. And don't worry about it, we'll, we'll cover it in detail, but... Uh, I thought I'll probably give you some ideas today uh, talking about, you know, possibilities of EZBI, some best practices. I just wanted to talk about it because uh, it is actually a really good app. And as I just, I think I have mentioned it in my previous videos. If you need help with EZBI, if you want to uh, hire a consultant, then reach out to me. We'll talk about it. All right. Bye-bye.